So far, we've looked at three different coordinate systems. The first coordinate system was the x, y, z coordinate system. These are rectangular coordinates, and this is the one that you're probably most familiar with. So in rectangular coordinates, you have your x direction, your y direction, and your z direction pointing upwards. Your unit vectors point along those three directions. So you have your i unit vector pointing along the x direction, you have your j vector pointing along y, and you have your k ve unit vector pointing along z. So if you're interested in the position vector, your position vector would be from some origin that you would define. So in this case, your origin would be the center here. And your position vector would be where the particle is relative to that fixed origin. And you denote that as the component in each direction. So you could say your r is equal to an x value in the i direction plus a y value in the j direction plus a z value in the k direction. Then, if you're interested in the velocity, the velocity of that particle will be the derivative of each component. And since your unit vectors here, i, j, and k, are not changing with time because they're fixed to these axes, they're not moving, the velocity and accelerations are just the derivatives of each individual component. So you would have the velocity is equal to the velocity in the x direction plus the velocity in the y direction plus the velocity in the k direction. And then the same applies for the acceleration. The next coordinate system that we looked at was normal and tangential components. Now this coordinate system moves with the particle. So if you have a particle moving along some curved path, we'll put a particle here. In this case, instead of having a position vector relative to a fixed point, you normally look at the distance x, or sorry, the distance s. So let's say you had here the distance from some original point. You would look more at the distance x, sorry, the distance s that has been traveled since from that first moment. But then the velocity is actually relative to the normal and tangential components. And so the tangential component is the component that's tangent to the path of motion. So that would be your ET. And your normal component points towards the center of curvature, and this is your EN. Since the unit vector ET is going tangent to the path of motion, that's also the direction of velocity by definition, because velocity by definition is tangent to the path of motion which means that your velocity vector would be equal to whatever your speed is, your speed v, and it's all going in that tangential direction. So there is no speed in the normal direction. But the normal direction really comes in when you're looking at acceleration. So the acceleration is equal to your change in speed, so your change in speed over time in the et direction plus your speed at that moment divided by the, the radius of the curvature in the en direction. And so when you're looking in normal and tangential components, you end up, especially for the acceleration, you end up here with one component that's capturing the speed change. So is the car accelerating or not? And then you have another component here that's capturing that radius of curvature and it's capturing the acceleration due to the specific curvature that that particle is moving along. The next coordinate system that we have is polar coordinates. In this case, we go back to having a fixed point. So we usually do it here and we have a fixed origin. And this is the point that your particle is rotating around. So let's say, Remember we had the robotic arm that was rotating, so it had a fixed point here. But the information that we're gathering is the distance from that fixed point where it's rotating from out to where the particle is. And then 
So you know this radial distance r, and then you know the angle from a reference point theta. In this case, your unit vectors, your first unit vector is an extension of your position vector. So it extends your position vector, and that's your er. And then your other component is 90 degrees counterclockwise from that. And this is considered your transverse component, but we call n as e theta. And so in this particular case, you still have a fixed origin here, but your coordinate system is again moving with your particle. In this case, the equation that you end up with is you have the velocity is equal to r dot er plus r theta dot dt. And then your acceleration is equal to r double dot minus r theta dot squared er plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot e theta. In these components, you're really capturing um, that radial distance. So let's say you have that prosthetic arm and it needs to reach, extend a certain amount. You'd be capturing that information there. And then you'd also be capturing information about that angular rotation, so angular velocity, angular acceleration. So technically, technically you could denote any type of curvilinear motion with any type of coordinate system, but you always choose the one that's most convenient. So for example, in rectangular components, we did a lot of projectile motion. And the reason for this was because we know that in the, in the x direction, in the horizontal direction, actually, I'll write this out, in the, in the x direction, velocity is constant. And in the y direction, the acceleration is constant. So it's a lot simpler to solve these equations because of this information that we have. I'm going to move this up a little bit. For normal and tangential components, oh, sorry, for normal and tangential components, this is where we have information about the path of motion. So we know the path of motion. Or we're interested, or we're interested in the path of motion. We want to know the, the radius of curvature. Or maybe we want to know how the speed itself is accelerating, that sort of thing. For polar coordinates, these are problems where we have rotation. So primarily, these are rotation problems that we're solving in polar coordinates. So it's very important to use the right coordinate system. Now you'll often get problems where the math of solving it is easiest in one coordinate system, but the answer is asking you for the answer in a different coordinate system. So let's say, for example, the question gives you information about the radius of curvature, but then it wants the answer to be in rectangular components over here. What you do is you solve the question in the coordinate system that's most convenient, and then you transfer it over. So, oh, sorry. Always solve problem in appropriate or most convenient coordinate system. Then transfer to coordinate system asked for. Now, because all of these systems are, are, or, are orthogonal vectors, it means you can just transfer them using trigonometry. I'm going to move this up a little bit more. So, let's say you have a path of motion here, and the information that you have is about the tangential component and the normal component. You can define how these are moving based on the path of motion. So this would be your ET and this would be your EN. 
But you can also define, let's say you have an x direction here and a y direction here. You can project your normal potential components into x and y components. And so here, if I connected this drawing here, and I'll do this part in yellow here, this component here, this would be en, whatever the value of the en part was, sine theta would be your i component. And then here, you could say en cos theta, and again, this is the cos we're using, sorry, that's the angle we're using, would be that j component. And then you would do the same thing here. You could project your tangential direction into your x and y. So here you would have, this would be your et cos, and this would be a different angle, so I'll call it phi. Cos phi would be your i component, and this part here would be et sine phi is equal to your j component. In this case, because I drew my y pointing downwards, because this et is pointing up, it would mean that this y component would actually be negative j. So I'm going to draw that in here as negative j. So it's really important, I'm going to move this up again, so make sure you understand the difference between the coordinate systems. And then make sure you can move between them. Sometimes it's really, it's really not practical and a question won't ask you to move between them. Um, I suggest when you're studying to move back and forth, so do rectangular and then NT and then uh, polar and move around, so don't always practice them at the same time.